good everyone this is damres photography and today we are going to be teaching full tutorial that's full retouching tutorial okay so for this image i used two light setup one light was coming from the side which was a rebian te lightning technique you see the light coming from here yes from the side the rebian lightning technique and then i have one come from the back just to light up the back the um, subject from the back this is separating half from the background you get so right now the next thing i'm going to do is just crop this image so i'm using a 16 by 20 crop size so i'm just going to crop it let's see around here um, let's see around here let's just move this a bit okay so i'm being careful here yeah, i want a bit of the a bit of the okay let's leave it around there okay and then i'm going to see how it looks that way when say it looks that way first and see if i want to increase it more okay i think this is really really good crop size i don't need to increase it more so i'm just going to click on okay i'm going to click on okay so this is our image next thing we're going to be doing is uh flatten that image like i told you make sure your crop make sure when you're cropping your image it's a smart object you get make sure it's a smart object the reason why you do that is so that the the, the, the quality of the image doesn't reduce even after you've cropped it you can see my image is a smart object so now that i finished cropping, cropping it i'm just going to click on flatten right click and flatten that image so right now i have my image so next thing i'm going to do what i want to do now is i want to separate the image from the background and then separate the background from the image the reason why i do that is because so that i can work on just basically the i can just work on the background layer if you can see we have a lot of things we want to clean up and it's going to be easier if i'm just working on the background layer i want to clean up this i want to smoothen the background you get quite a lot of things you want to do on the background so it's easier when you're working on just the background layer so first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to click on ctrl j after clicking on ctrl j i'll just go to this part properties and then i'll click on select subject you could also go to select and click on select let's see mm, you could click on select so um select the max i think you could also click on subject but i don't really do that i just click go to properties around here so you see now i clicked on subject there and i think it's going to just select subject you get both to do it sharply instead of me looking for it around here we just click on here and then click on select subject you get and then that does it for me so as you can see it has selected my subject but as you can see too it's not clean we have quite a lot of we have quite a lot of uh, issues with with the subject it has selected you get so you see now there are a lot of places so what i'm just going to do now is i'm going to go through the image and then fine tune all the selections it has made you get the ones it did not make correctly i'll just have to fine tune them so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use the edit the edit in quick max mode edit you see when i click on here you see what it tells me edit in quick max mode that's what i'm going to use to fine tune my edit my um select subject and that is using the brush tool so if i click on that right now you see it's showing me a red panel so i'll just pick my brush tool and then you see around here now that place is not painted if you off it you see this place is not painted it's not selected so i just on it again you use red to paint where you want to be painted and then use white to to clean up where you don't want to be selected like now i want this place to be part of the selection so i'm using i'm painting on blacks you see blacks i use it to to paint or uh, the paint paint those parts i said i want to be part of the selection so if i off that you can see that is already part of the selection so next thing first i'm just going to go through the ears okay i think for here the ears are okay i'm going to go through the top of the hair okay it's okay yeah so i'm going to go around here okay this is not okay so i'm going to off that again and then like i said i'm just trying to go through every part of my image and work on those parts i see are not well selected you get and then just fine tune fine tune them you get so 
like now around here a change to, to white because it's painted in two ways no it's, it's selected in two ways not meant to select to i own that so you just try to toggle off and on and see it very very well and see where it has been selected and where it has not been selected okay let me just try to do this quickly now finish selecting this image from the background what I did was I click on ctrl J and then we have this we have you see now we've separated the image from the background we have this just pure image from the background it was not the a hey, we're not clean enough you get but then again it does the job you get it's a bit slow if you have any other way you can select a subject just know that just make sure you've had your subject selected I just had to go in detail with the hair you could decide not to you get you just decide to cut it off around here but for me i had to just because it gave it the feel so after you've done that you just have to click on ctrl j again on that same um image layer go to the image the layer beneath it right click and click on select inverse so now you see that i'm selecting i've made the selection of just the background and i click on ctrl j ctrl j yeah mistake okay ctrl j click on ctrl j as you can see now if i off every other layer and just leave this layer there you can see now i have a selection of just that background layer this time i'm just going to do for i'm just going to do for the top of the what they call it the top of the layer i'm, I'm top of the image and what i'm going to do how i'm going to do that is i'm just going to select here you get select here like this I'm not selecting select I'm making sure not to select the floor you get I'm just selecting the the top part as you can see I've selected the top part I'm also going to use the lasso tool to remove this part of my selection because it's not meant to be in it yeah doing something like that okay as you can see what I'm going to do is right click and select inverse uh, okay okay no that's a mistake what i'm going to do first is i'm going to right do this okay this is the top i'm going to click on ctrl j i see i've used a rectangular marker to, to select the top of that background layer i'll click on ctrl j you see i'm learning this with you so if you see if i off that and on everything you see that's just a layer with just the top of the the top of the background and then i'm going to do the same thing to it i'll select it again but this time i'm going to right click select inverse which is just the floor i'll go down to that layer again and i'll click on to my background layer and click on ctrl g as you can see right here i have just the background just the background so let me just clean that first i'm going to clean just the background first this one is just the background this one is just i mean this one is just the floor of the background this is the top of the background so what i'm going to do for this one is going to be what i'm going to do is going to i'm going to um i'm just going to yes use my mark q2 i'm going to use my mark q2 to select this part i don't want inside my image yet this part i don't want inside my image then i'm just going to use this one too to just remove all those parts you get I was going to use it to remove all those parts okay and then i'm going to right click and then click on content away fill and then content away fill will fill up the floor using you see now because i only have the background selected so content away will fill up that part using just that floor part you see now we're having more seamless so the stuff is going to be cleaner than the way that other one give us um, what they call use every other part to fill up you use the floor to fill up the the top so right now the floor we only fill up the floor so i have okay for that so i'm just going to select that so one thing i could do again is one thing i could do what I, i'm going to go back one thing i could do again is after i selected this stuff before i do the content away i could right click and click on feather i could right click and click on feather 
and then apply quite a lot of feather i'm going to apply 20. the reason why i'm doing that is so that it will not give it will not be too sharp you see the the, the place where um it's cut if i don't feather it it will be too sharp you get mm, okay let's control z i gave it a feather but why did uh -huh. so i gave it a feather so that it will not be too sharp what i'm going to do now do now is right click and then i'll go to content aware field and then let's see what content away does let's see if that edge will still be too sharp i don't want that edge to be too sharp you get so that's nice i think that's nice okay i'll click on okay let me see let's see we might need to go back if it's not looking nice if the these two sides are not looking together because i told you i've not tried this before but i'm trying to make the background look more clean you get and more seamless so let's deselect that oh okay that's not bad that's not bad but the thing is the floor is looking mm -hmm, you see now the shadows there mm, shadows there has gone out shadows there has gone out but no problem we'll bring it back later we'll bring it back later so what we'll do now is we're going to go to so let's delete this one so now we've done a what they call it, we've cleaned up the floor for that one we've cleaned up the the floor part so what i'm going to do is i'm going to clip it to the background layer i mean i'm going to clip it to this one and then match both of them so we, this is our floor part this is our floor part so now we'll go to the um, what they call it we'll go to the top part um, the top of the background so what you do again is pick your rectangular mark you to again and then you select all those parts you don't want in your background and then you use your lasso tool again to remove those parts that are selected that don't need to be selected you get so around here all these parts don't need to be selected because they can be used and then you just go to your content aware field for the top i don't need to think you need to use a feather so mm, that's nice let's see how it does that one now and let's see how everything goes oh you see now right now we're having a better top of the background it's not filling up with the flaws again you get so i think this looks better but there's a mistake here which we can use uh or what they call clone stamp to clean you can see the top of this part you can use clone stamp to clean that so i'll just when you finish loading we just click on ok and let's see how everything looks ok clone stamp we're waiting for that ok ok as you can see now then let me on every other layer and let us see how everything looks i'm just going to select that oh i didn't clean up this part but no no worries i'll do that later so as you can see we have everything looking like that but the problem here and right now is that we're having sharp edges here so what i'm going to do let me sh turn that to the top let's see oh, 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 oh okay so let's have that don't worry i'll work on that later or better still better still let's just go back let's do this like this better still let's do it like this okay let's go back 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 mm -hmm. so let's do it like this let's just do everything at once let's uh, add this to it let's just do it at once let's add this to it let's also use this one rectangular market to, to add this to it too nice okay next thing we're going to be doing is uh next thing we're going to be doing is go to feather and then let's just feather it by 10 let's see feather by 10 okay then we'll right click content away fill and then allow the content away to do its work So allow content away to do this work there and that's what happens okay now we'll click on ok for that
Okay, so allow that to load. Then I'll just allow that to load. Okay, and then I click on just select that. Okay, and then I'm just going to on every other layer. On every other layer, as you can see. So this is what we have. Okay, so we are having some ish there, but those things can be cleaned with using uh, what they call it, using the clone stamp. But as you can see now, right now we're just having quite a better cleaned up background than the first one we had when we allowed um, what they call when we allowed the uh, uh, content aware to just fill it up with every part of this image. As you can see, the floor is dirty. We can't be allowing the dirty floor to come into the clean background. You get. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to clip every other thing i'm going to clip every other thing you get you know ctrl z clip this to this merge that i'm going to clip this to the background layer i'm also going to merge that and clip this also to the background layer and then merge that and now we have this is our background layer before after before after so on that background layer right now what we want to do is we want to use the clone stamp to just clean up those imperfections we have in our background layer so what i'm just going to do is i'm just going to clean up this part oh uh, okay let's go back let's make sure uh -huh, we are having a soft round brush i felt that was too hard let's go back and let us try cleaning up a bit yeah that's it um Okay, so also need to clean here. Need to clean here. okay so we have that for the background next thing someone told me we could just blow this and the same person said we could just blow the background blow the blow the what they call um just blow this. so what i'm just gonna go and click on ctrl j i was told that i could just blow this i told you i do this before but i stopped doing it but now i'm just going to try it out so i'm going to select the top of the background first and then click on filter blow caution blow no no before that i'm going to right click that and go to feather and then give it a feather let's say feather of 20 let's give it a feather of 20 okay then i'm going to go to filter filter blow gaussian blow and then just apply gaussian blow to smoothing that background like seriously smoothing the background you get why i don't like using this apart from the fact that I do get some ish with it after I finish all the smoothing you get I get some ish with it but we'll see if we could uh, what they call it work on that this time so right now I'm going to just give, leave it at that 200 and then click on ok as you can, can see now I've done that for the for the what they call it for the background I've done that for the background, right? Yes, I've done that for the background. Now, right click, select inverse, and then apply the same thing to, to the underneath of it. And then just select and see how it is. Let's see before, after, before, after. Wow, this is cool. Like, this is cool. This is good. But, like I said, there's something I usually noticed after I save my images. I found out that I have some 
issues like sort of uh, uh i don't know what they call them but it's usually round so what i'm going to do for this i asked about i asked people about it and i was told i could just add a grain to eat like a noise so what i'm just going to do now i'm going to go to no um, um camera roll yes i'm going to go to camera roll and then i'm going to add a noise over that i'm just going to add the noise over that i don't know how many how much i should add i think i should just add let's say 30. so then uh, that means i'm giving sort of bit of texture to this background you get i'm giving a bit of texture to that background so I'm just going to give it noise and click on OK. Let's see. So I was told by doing this, by doing this, I won't have all those um, issues that I'm having with it. I think hope it works well. So right now I'm just going to right click this to this of uh, my background layer and then merge it. Then I'm just going to own every other thing. Oh, as you can see now, we're having quite a really, 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 really clean background. As you can see, before, after, before, after, before, after. This is a really, 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 really clean background again. A really, really clean background. I love this. But then again, one thing I noticed with this is also that we lose quite a bit of um, shadows. You get, if I own this back, you see we had shadows on the shoes you get we have shadows on the shoes we have shadows around here due to the chair we have shadows around here to due to the uh what they call it, due to the due to the shoe too you get around here around here we have shadows we have shadows around here we have shadows around here so what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to click on multiply i'm going to click on chords and then make sure my blend mode is on multiply Make sure my blend mode is on multiply. And then I'm going to invert that curves layer. I'm going to click on Ctrl I, invert that curves layer. Yeah. So I'm just going to brush over the places I think shadows are. I'm just going to brush over. As you can see, I've off every other layer and I've gone to the main background layer. That's the main image. And through that, I'm able to see where the curves are you get. And where the shadows are you get and then i'm just trying to just paint something just like that you get over that the reason why i'm doing that is so that your image my image would not look like it's floating you get i don't want my image looking like it's floating yeah something like that i don't really want my image to look like it's floating so that's the reason why i'm trying to just do that you get so you're having shadows around there having shadows around here then we have shadows around mm, we have shadows around here we have shadows around here I think we also have shadows around here as you can see don't mind the fact that is I'm painting the shoes the truth is um, my, my curves layer is on top of the background layer so this thing is just going to affect just the background it's not going to affect the the what they call it. it's not going to affect the shoes i mean it's not going to affect the subject you get it's just going to affect just my background so if i own that you can see if i own every other thing you can see this is what is happening my back my curves is not looking and my my shadows are not looking shadowy they are not looking good you get but you just reduce the feel you get like i said what i'm just trying to do is just to bring back those shadows you get i'm just trying to bring back those shadows uh ctrl z i'm just trying to bring back those shadows you get I'm just trying to bring back the shadows the shadows there just trying to bring them back and make sure they're not looking artificial then make sure they are there you get so my 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 image is not looking like it's floating you get mm -hmm. think around there and then we are having something like this for after before after okay so i think i'll just do it
we're going to clean up here I think I'm just going to do it for my shoes I'm just going to do it for my shoes okay let's go back let me change okay yeah my brush is 100 percent just going to do it for my shoes yes around here my shoes my shoes yeah around here too we should have that around here too so before after so i'm just going to increase that a bit like i said i'm going to clean up every other thing just clean them up and disturb my shoe <laughs> so like i said i'm trying to just make sure my shoes don't look floating you get before after before after just a bit of um what they call the detail to it you get so i'm just going to clip that right to the background and then match those clips together as you can see for the background clean up we have before after before after don't mind it that it's looking slow it's looking slow because i'm trying to teach but when you start doing it especially if you have it means to really clean up and um, what they could select your images faster then this process will really be fast so next i'm going to just zoom in on my image and then see all the parts i need to clean up on this image you get just going on my image so right now i'm going to use the patch tool to clean up the skin of my model uh, yeah this is going to be quite fast So while you're using the pass through, just make sure, make sure you're um, you are not on transparent. Just make sure you're not on tra transparent here. Or else it will feel like you're not doing anything. So while you want to do your pass through, just try it. I've tried using pass through before too, and it was looking like I was not doing anything. But when I noticed I was on transparent, then everything started working out. So as you can see, better skin, that's skin clean up, we just use the part 2 to do the skin clean up before, after, before, after. So the next thing we just go to skin retouching using the frequency separation. So I'm just going to put all this into one bag, into one group and name that background. And then before, after, before, after. So what I'm just going to do right now is I'm just going to click make a make a stamp layer by clicking on Ctrl or Shift E, making a stamp layer. So now that I've made a stamp layer, I'll click on Ctrl J and make this my high layer. Hmm? Ctrl Z, Ctrl J, Ctrl Z, sorry, Ctrl G. What's happening? What's happening? what's happening what's happening uh -huh, something was wrong there okay so then make those two name this one high layer then name this one the low layer put both of them into one folder and name that fs which is yes for frequency separation so now i'm going to zoom in zoom in off the high layer and then i'm going to make a uh, off the high layer then i'm going to just go to filter for me i use median for frequency separation i can you, you can either use median you could either use gaussian blur so i switch in between those two but most times i use median for my gaussian blur you get and for my frequency separation so i just go to noise and i pick median and right now i'm trying to I'm trying to pick the best radius for my um, frequency separation. I want the textures, I want the rough textures to be smoothed out, but I don't want my, I don't want the whole texture on the skin, like all the lines to be smoothed out to get. So right now we just have to move them step by step. Right now I put it on seven, let me see how it is going to be, before, after, before, after okay right now seven i think um seven is too much because all the lines are really quite smooth so i'm going to try five 
let me try five for this image every image has a different radius that, that will work for them you get depending on the image you're working on that's what you know the radius will work for you use for it so you have to keep note of that just because i use five right now doesn't mean the image you're using is you five that will be required for it okay so i think five is okay and then i click on okay click on okay now i'll move to my high layer i'll move to my high layer on that and then i'll go to image i'll go to apply now I'll make sure my layer is on low i make sure my layer is on low layer and I'll make sure my blend mode is on subtract then i make sure the scale is at 100 make sure the scale is at i mean make sure the scale is at two the offset is at 100 and then the opacity is at 100 the offset is at 128 okay then i change the blend mode to linear light okay so that's it so that's um, what they call it. this is where this frequency separation will start up so as we've done that we'll just make sure right now i told people just go to your mixer brush use your mixer brush to play paint from lights to shadows frequency separation is all about um, blending your um, blending your shadows to your highlights blending just make sure you have smooth transitions between highlights and shadows you get so first of all you make sure you're on a soft round brush make sure you're on a clean brush then make sure your weight is about from 15 to 25 depending if you use 25 you feel it's too much you can reduce to about 15 20 there about to get then your load is on 30 your mix is on 30 your flow is on 30 so right now one thing again i like doing with my um when i'm applying my frequency separation is to make a selection of just the subject the reason why is so that my brush sometimes i tend to put my brush outside the image so that gives me sort of okay it helps me stop it helps me know that okay don't take it outside outside the image if you're able to control your brush well you don't need to do that so for me this is what i just do so right now like i said i'm trying to blend the text um the um highlights from lights to shadows the highlights to the shadows i'm trying to blend the transitions you get so i'm just going to go around it like that one thing that helps out again is knowing where the where the light from the for the image is coming from. You get when you know that it's usually easier to know where the light is and where the shadows. next thing we're going to do is just to use the clone stamp to go through the skin of the image to see if there's anything we need to remove from the skin and then we'll just use the clone stamp to remove that make sure your clone stamp your opacity is at 100 but your flow is at 15 and then make sure you're working on the high layer and then you just have to just clean up every part you feel you need to clean up on the skin for me i don't zoom in too much especially this is not a beauty retouch this is a, not a full skin as a, this is not a headshot you get this is a this is a full body image you get so i don't zoom in and then just try to clean up those parts that my eyes can see you get because your eyes will really see a lot if you go if you zoom in a lot you get your eyes will really see a lot so this is not an image whereby people go and start checking the whole detail of the skin you get so just try to just clean up those parts that you are that just quite visible you get so i'm just trying to go through the image and see where it needs to be cleaned up so let's see of that okay before after before after that's all the whole thing let's put that there let's see before after before after nice so you can see just these little things and then you've transformed this image from here to here from here to here so like i said i'm going to do 
dungeon but but it's not really dungeon bunny it's just a fast paced stuff just to enhance the highlights and the shadows you get so what i'm just going to do is i'm going to make click on control and click on this image this subject selection and then i'll click on my curves layer you can see i've made a curve selection of just the image so i'm just going to brighten it up a bit then i'm going to double click on that then I'm going to hold this particular like, one and bring it right here, around here. Then I'm going to hold HALT again and then drag it. You see, I've divided, by holding the HALT, I've divided that particular, um, um, what do you call, that particular point. And then I bring it around here. Then I bring this one around here too. Don't drag it too much. Don't drag it too far apart. I just click on OK. Right now, as you can see now, I've been able to enhance the highlights you get. The highlights and then also a bit of the shadows you get so more of the highlights i think yeah one thing i could do again i've never played with this in let us just play with it a bit and see what i could do more okay oh that's nice all my shadows so what i want to try to do is just try to play with my shadows a bit but that's not working well okay so let's take this one up a bit this is nice what well, if i bring another point down here so what do we have before after before after still not affecting the shadows much okay so we'll just take this one a bit to the top like that and then we'll be able to enhance the the highlights you get we'll be able to enhance the highlights so just make sure you don't take it too much you just watch I, mean, I don't do it a lot i just want to enhance the highlights just a bit so another thing i do is i go to layer I go to new layer and then i go to soft light and i click on fill with 50 fill with soft light neutral color 50 percent gray and then i pick my brush tool i make sure my opacity that 100 so my flow is at one percent then i just go into my image right now what i want to do now is enhance my shadows so what I'm just going to do now is I'll just click on, make sure my brush tool is on black. And then I just paint on those places I want to enhance. Like now the contours. I want to enhance the contours of this image. And that thing I do is I hold that um, frequency separation layer. And then I try to enhance the contours of my, of my, especially see this place where the blush is. I enhance that. Next thing I enhance this, um, the darkness around the lips. And has the darkness around the slips and here too i could change to white and then brighten up just the middle part a bit yes then another thing i do is the nose and has the contour of the nose the contour of the nose i enhance that by burning that you get i just burn the contours of the nose and then i could give it a bit of highlight in the middle too then I go to the eyes, especially here. I'm just going to darken the eyebrow. I'm just trying to bring out those details, enhance them, let them be into focus more. Just going to do this too to the this part of the eyes. See, I'm just burning them and then just trying to bring them into focus. You get just trying to bring them into focus. Another thing I use this um, layer to do is the eyes itself. Normally, if this was a full image. Let me just do it here so you see i could just bring out the catch inside the eyes i'm just going to enhance the eyes a bit more so right now i'm brightening this part of the eyes i'm brightening this part of the eyes yes i'm brightening that i'm brightening that and i'm going to darken the inside part And I'm going to darken here too. I'm also going to do that for this part of my eyes. So if you can see now, I've given my eyes, the eyes of my uh, model, more detail, more attention. You get it will catch your eyes more. That is, it will catch your attention more. The way it is right now. So I'm just going to do this. This would even work better, here, especially when you're doing. And headshot image, beauty image, something that just catching just the head, just the um, face of the model. It be able to catch more attention when you have more attention to the eyes. You can see now the image was looking more dull before, but look at it right with just that. 
so now i'm going to on the frequency separation layer and you can see the old and put these two into one folder i name that db this is my small db <laughs> dodge and bond so i'm just going to off that on that off that on that you see the difference it's made to the image so right now last but not least, this for skin retouching i'm just going to whiten the eyes i'm going to whiten the eyes i'm going to leave my skin retouch my eye um, what they call my um white eye whitening um action on the link below so you can just download it if you don't have it so that you can use it to whiten your eyes so if you're still here with me please you've come a long way and seriously you're on the right path please don't forget to subscribe don't forget to like don't forget to share seriously it's not that hard huh just don't forget to subscribe like and share okay so for the eye whitening part i'll go to the photo filter layer there and then i'm going to change it to 70 percent you can change the fill you can leave the fill at 100 percent but for me i feel it's really too white so i like changing my fill to 100 to 70 percent make sure my opacity is at 100 my flow is at 100 now i'm just going to paint on the whites of the eyes make sure your brush is at what on white and then you paint on the white of the eyes then you can change to black to delete to clean up every part that's come out of there's a part you painted that is not that is not part of where you should paint you just use the blacks to clean them up you get there is the blacks to clean them up and i'm going to go to the same thing do the same thing here and then i'm just going to clean up every part that's not meant to be painted okay so we have that for the eyes you have that for the eyes so i'm just going to put everything into one folder into one group and then i'm just going to name that skin okay so right now we're having this is our image as you can see before after before after before after clean right very very clean nice okay so next thing we're going to do it we're going to do the color grading and i use my camera raw for color grading so just go through it make another stamp layer ctrl or shift e to make your stamp layer then you go to go to filter you go to camera raw go to camera raw first thing you do when you're on camera raw is you go to your effects no not your effects go to your calibration and then work on the calibration first work on the calibration first so we'll just give the saturation about seven then move the hues to this side is this what you want no is this what you want so i'm just going to give it a bit of red i want a red a bit of red in my image so that's beautiful then i'm going to go to this give the saturation a bit of seven too and then i'll just move here I like it a bit of red too in my image okay seven for the hues too around there i think that's okay and now for the reds i really don't do much on the reds because it affects the skin a lot so i'm just going to give the saturation for reds too then i'm going to move like i said it affects the skin a lot so i'm just going to give that to minus two so we have that what calibration does is it pops out the colors in um in the image itself so we just have before before after before after if you like you might not touch your calibrations you get i like doing that but if you like you really don't need to touch your calibrations you can just go straight to color grading but i like doing that for my calibration because it could change the whole feel of the image too you get so i'm just going to go to shadows first then go to shadows first and then i'm just going to um move around it you see this part of um, what they call color grading when you move it around down when you move the circle downwards you are adding more saturation to it so you have to be careful you don't want lots of saturation so what i do i just leave it around this point i leave it around this point same for everything and what i just do is just move around move around the color that's the hue of the colors you get and just pick the right one i feel for the image i'm a kind of cool color person you get I'm kind of cool, cool color person so i think i'll just walk around here first i'll leave it around here for that then i'll go to my shadows okay this is the shadows right so now i'm going to my highlights i'm also going to do the same thing 
make sure the colors is around there the saturation is around there so do the same thing for me what i found out is if you leave your color your shadows around there then leave your highlights around that area too it's usually cool you get it will, the color will work that way you get just leave your shadows around that area i think this is okay for my shadows and for my highlights and then right now i'm just going to work on the mid-tones and then i'm just going to play around with the mid-tones and see where i want more okay i think around here love it around here yeah i love it around here so we have this before after before after you have this before after before after you see how you've changed the whole of the tune the whole of the um the the the, the dynamic dy dy dynamics of the image so color grading is the part you really should learn you could change a whole lot in your images just with color grading so next we're going to do is i'm going to go to curves i'm going to work on just the rgb point that's this one affects all parts of the image so i'm going to just give it three points here three points here normally for me i like using the s curve for this part of the curves layer it just gives it an effect i found out that works for all almost all my images you get it works a lot for it you could play around with it just to give it a bit of um dramatics but for me i just love that so for me i'm just going to give this a bit yes i like what what goes on around here like this you get you could just make your image look just you see what i'm trying to say so you could do a lot of things with just your curves so for me i don't need it too dramatic i'm just going to give it a bit of that yeah that's nice i'm going to bump it up here a bit too yes i'm going to take this one up a bit then let's see if i take this one down what how does it look oh that's nice too but it's too much so i'm just going to leave it around here let's see if i take this one up a bit too what does it give you oh so i like this truthfully i like this edit this was not what i did for my from previous image i done an ed edit already though it was a close-up on this same outfit i don't think the out outcome was like this let me check it out so this was the outcome of what i did previously i like this too yeah i like this too but i think i also like what the color grade i'm doing here right now so what i'm going to do is like i told you anytime you have plenty images in the same shoot set like the same clothing set but you have a lot of images you want to retouch for that same clothing set so what you have to do is after you've done your color grading you go to um, more and you go to save click on save you save that color grading so me i'm saving it right now i'm going to save it where i can always locate it for this particular image see i've saved one before i'm going to save this one color one since i have that one one color one so i'm going to save that so what i'm going to show you now is okay let's say i come into this image right now and that i've already saved my color i just have to go there more and click on load and it will take me to you have to just it, even if it doesn't take you to where you save your image you just have to look for it where you saved it and then click on that color grading you saved before and click on open so right now i'm going to open my previous color grading and let's see how it looks you see this is my previous color grading i think it looks alike quite alike that means my my taste my taste doesn't really change that much so this is the previous color grading we used and i think it's almost alike i'm going to go back again load if it's looking alike then you see i think this one just has a bit more dramatics than that one but they are really really almost alike that means my taste doesn't really change <laughs> so that's all about color grading so i'm just going to click on okay and as you can see we have this for the image one thing again i like to do is separating the image for the background normally i think it doesn't even really need for this particular image i'm just going to do that in case you did not separate the image using a light while you're shooting your image you would want to separate your image from the background a bit so i'm just going to select my subject again and click on levels yes levels and then i'm just going to increase the middle part a bit I'm going to give it a bit of shadows by here and i'm going to give this one so this is my midpoint and then i'm just going to work on that midpoint a bit so as you can see before after before after so so we have that for separating the image from the background next thing 
is sharpening our image sharpening our image so make another stamp player make another stamp player then we'll go to filter we'll go to order and we'll go to high pass so now depending on how much you want to sharpen your image that that means the radius you're going to be using but make sure you don't use too much or else it will affect the skin texture of your image and you would probably like what you see so for this one let me try for and click on ok then i'll change the what they call the um blend mode to soft light and i'm going to zoom in and then see you see now i'm having a sharp image but then again it brought out quite a lot of things inside my image you can see what it brought out all this dot 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 i probably will need to go and soften my image more if i leave it like this so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go back i'm going to go back and to my stamp player go to my filter go to my order go to my eye pass and then change that stuff to two yes i think this will be okay okay then i'll change my blend mode to soft light yes you see this is way better this is way better so that's all for sharpening the image that's all for sharpening the image last but not the least for this retouching tutorial we're just going to brighten up our image we're just going to brighten up our image yeah so normally i just like to click on auto first and see what photoshop thinks about the image see where it feels where photoshop feels my uh, what they call it, where my brightness and contrast should be photoshop is quite dramatic and i won't lie to you i quite love what photoshop is giving me this dramatic feel you get the old shadowing and lightning it's quite good but then again i'll just play with it on my own first <laughs> i'm going to play with it on my own first so i'm going to take up the brightness quite too much too much too much too much i'm just playing with it right now so as you can see i think the brightness is okay around here but then again i'm feeling it's quite flat it looks a, a bit flat there's no dark it's not quite dark to my interest so i'm going to take it up and then i'll just be dropping it down gradually gradually yeah i think it's okay around here for me this is okay around here for me not as dramatic as photoshop would give me around here <laughs> not as dramatic as photoshop but white 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 yeah i like this i really do love this image you get so before after before after before after and then go ahead to just export your image as you get make sure while you're expecting exporting your image your color um your on your color space make sure you've clicked on convert to srgb and embed color profile and make sure your um quality is at high though it depends on how big you want the file to be make sure your resample is on by cubic sharper this is another way to make sure your images come as sharp as possible so make sure your image is on by cubic sharper and then just click on export if you like this tutorial if you enjoyed this tutorial please don't forget to subscribe yeah i'm on my knees guys i'm on my knees seriously please don't forget to subscribe uh and i'll see you in the next lecture have a wonderful day guys